Crocodilomorphs are sometimes known as living fossils, but they were once a highly diverse group of tetrapods. Starting off as more terrestrial forms, crocodilomorphs have adapted to every type of habitat during their evolutionary history. They have conquered semi-aquatic habitats with modern crocodiles. The terrestrial ones with curious species such as Yakarirani, the rabbit croc, and even the sea with Meteorinchids. Meteorinchids were wonderfully adapted to marine ecosystems. They had limbs that had evolved into flippers, smooth skin lacking osteoderms, and a bilobed tail similar to that of mosasaurs. And as if that wasn't enough, a Meteorinchid genus even evolved dinosaur like traits. The name of this beast is Dacosaurus, but researchers have nicknamed it Godzilla because of its snout shape which superficially resembles that of the famous Japanese monster. And this episode of Prehistoric Profile is dedicated precisely to Dacosaurus, the marine Godzilla. The genus Dacosaurus was erected in 1856 by Friedrich August von Kinsted and was based on some isolated teeth, initially thought to belong to Megalosaurus. These teeth were typically long, curved, laterally compressed and serrated, just like a theropod's tooth. From these traits come the genus name Dacosaurus, which means biting lizard. More complete remains were discovered in 1902 by Eberhard Frass. They consisted of a complete jawbone and part of the maxilla and the premaxilla. These remains were referred to the North European species Dacosaurus maximus. Only in 1987 was a complete skull found in Argentina. Later, this skull became known as Dacosaurus sandinensis. Furthermore, in 2019, a complete skeleton referable to Dacosaurus was discovered in Germany, although it still hasn't been officially described yet. Thanks to these remains and to the comparison with similar animals, we can infer a lot about the biology of this ancient crocodile relative. Dacosaurus's jaws weren't long and slender like those of other crocodilomorphs, but were instead short and robust, just like many theropod dinosaurs. The teeth were long, curved and serrated. They were probably used for ripping meat from its prey without engaging in the death row, the role that modern crocodiles use for ripping off chunks of meat. In particular, its abraded teeth suggest that in life they were in contact with one another, thus increasing the surface area and the efficiency of every bite. This hypothesis is also supported by the shape of the snout, which allowed the animal to deliver powerful bites to its prey. The skulls that have been found also show some difference in the shape of the teeth. The premaxillary teeth were small and thin, and were followed by larger and more robust teeth, whereas they became progressively smaller towards the back of the mouth. Dacosaurus probably used its front teeth to hold its prey and to tear off the meat, while its back teeth may have been used to push the food into its throat. Moreover, many isolated teeth saw a chipped or warm point, just like in modern day killer whales, and this shows that its diet at least partly consisted in animals with rough skin, like sharks. It's possible that this animal could have partly fed by suction, that is, sucking prey with its mouth, a technique used today by some sharks and cetaceans. From a phylogenetic point of view, Dacosaurus belongs to the Geosaurine Meteorinchids, a group of marine crocodilomorphs adapted to feed on large prey items. The two species, Dacosaurus maximus and Dacosaurus sandiniensis, are easily told apart by the shape of their skulls. Dacosaurus maximus had a longer skull, vaguely reminiscent to that of other Meteorinchids, whereas Dacosaurus sandiniensis had a much shorter and compact skull. It is possible that the two species are linked by ancestry. In fact, Dacosaurus maximus lived in the first half of the Upper Jurassic, while Dacosaurus andinensis lived between the end of the Upper Jurassic and the beginning of the Lower Cretaceous. Furthermore, the morphological differences in the skulls of the two species might represent a progressive adaptation to hunting larger animals. These differences could also be the result of a different adaptive radiation, given that Dacosaurus maximus has only been found in Europe, while Dacosaurus andinensis has only been found in South America. The geographic distribution of the genus was remarkable. Its remains have been found in France, Switzerland, Germany, the UK, Poland, Russia, Argentina and Mexico. 
Like all Mutrorinkids, Dacosaurus possessed an elongated body, limbs adapted into flippers, and a bilobed tail, useful for moving through the water. Mutrorinkids, being related to crocodiles, are grouped within the Archosaurs, a group that includes pterosaurs, dinosaurs, crocodiles, and all their extinct relatives. It is usually thought that archosaurs needed to lay eggs to reproduce, but Mutrorinkids, just like Ichthyosaurs, probably gave birth to their offspring in the water. They could have been viviparous, that is, without eggs like cetaceans, or oviviparous, where the eggs hatch inside of the body and the mother gives birth to live young. The areas in which Dacosaurus has been found suggest that this animal lived in deep sea environments. This is demonstrated by the large orbits and the well developed sclerotic rings a feature associated with animals with good eyesight, even in low-light conditions. Furthermore, recent research has shown that Mutorinkids had a high body temperature, useful for animals which live in relatively cold waters. Unfortunately, Dacosaurus were not included in this analysis. Nonetheless, both its morphology and the habitat in which it lived in suggest that it had a higher metabolism than that of other Mutorinkids. The fact that it lived in deep water also suggests that this animal was viviparous as this strategy enables the mother to spare nutrients useful in reproduction, that is those substances usually found in superficial waters, like calcium, for the development of the eggshell. But Dacosaurus' skull also shows other traits. As opposed to other marine reptiles, the nostrils weren't positioned from the back of the snout, but were positioned at the tip of the snout and were fused. The peculiar morphology of the nasal bones and the upper jaw suggests the presence of a process that acted as a contact for soft tissue. So in life, the head would have been higher than the underlying skull, in a similar fashion to cetaceans. The middle ear shows a compact passage, semicircular channels, similar to those found in cetaceans, although it wasn't miniaturized as in the latter's. The outer ear instead was small and located on the back of the head. Meteorinkid skin, as opposed to that of a crocodile, wasn't covered in osteoderms, and the discovery of a fully articulated and complete skeleton supports this theory, but we know nothing about the scales of this creature. Nevertheless, we can make educated guesses but looking at the skin of other marine reptiles. To guarantee hydrodynamicity, the scales were likely smaller than those of extant crocodiles, while still being flat and adhering to the body. All these features made Dacosaurus a truly unique animal, a hydrodynamic predator with a high metabolism, an aquatic theropod mimic that was able to bring down large prey. Dacosaurus, the marine Godzilla, was one of the most majestic and ferocious predator to live on this planet. Great, if you enjoyed this video, please press like. If you want to sustain us and our work, subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. A special thanks to Fabio Mongiovi, Luca De Florian, Mattia Yuri Messina, Valerio Mariani, Michele Schirru and our dear friend Ivan Ofrida. As usual, today's video was approved by Lambiosaurus Lambay.